let's talk about analyzing graphs of quadratic functions. So this is the way this is going to work. Write each equation in vertex form. Identify the vertex, axis of symmetry, and graph it. So a really good idea, which I saw in your quizzes that kind of concerned me, was that you forget what you're doing. You just get caught up in graphing. Okay, what am I actually asking for? First of all, it's a graph, and I've asked, I'm asked to graph it, so I better have some type of XY table. Even if I use some other form to solve for this, I better have an XY table to back it up because I'm graphing. Okay? It said to identify the vertex. I'm going to remind myself, boy, I better write down that vertex. Axis of symmetry. And while I'm at it, what else can I tell which can help me with a graph right from the very beginning? Y intercept. All right, so that being said, let's follow our steps. My first step is to group and factor by completing the square. So I'm going to hold on. I think if I want to identify, I don't. We'll get there in a second. All right. So I want to group x squared plus 4x. So I'm going to say I'm going to concentrate on x squared plus 4x. Put my plus 6 over here. It says group and factor by completing the square. So this is the beginning of completing the square, correct? Normally, I would take the 6 and put it on the other side, right? But I'm trying to put it into vertex form. That's what I want to say. This, without all this right here, this right here, what we were just talking about, guys, get rid of my extra stuff here, is vertex form. Isn't this my vertex? Didn't I find my vertex by just saying I need to shift over 3 and down 2? So if I can take this equation right here and put it into vertex form, wouldn't it tell me exactly where my vertex is so that I can graph this equation? All right, so let's do that using completing the square. Because isn't that what this looks like? It's like a perfect square trinomial minus 2. All righty, so... Normally, I would add, or I'm sorry, subtract 6 from both sides. But this time, I want to stay on this side because I want it to look like that. So, my next step is to add C, correct? Find C and add it to both sides. Well, if I can't add it to both sides, I can add it and subtract it. Isn't that the same thing? Adding to both sides is even, correct? I give one to you, I give one to you. Isn't, that, isn't it the same thing if I give one to you and then take one away? Don't I have the same thing? So if I'm going to keep everything on one side of the equation, if I want to add something, then I need to also take it away on the outside of that parenthesis. Then it's still even. It's like adding a zero pair. Right? Okay, so if I want to solve for this, I need to split my 4 in half. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 2 squared is? So I'm going to add. Oops, I wanted to change my color. So I want to add 4 to both sides. And at the same time, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. I, should, I said both sides. Add 4 to one side and subtract 4 from one side. So let's continue. So I'm going to go ahead and factor this. This is x plus what? 2 squared. And positive 6 and negative 4 is just positive 2. That's not usually the form I have it in. Let's write our form right here. y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. The h and the k are my vertex. And we'll explain that in just a second. A, that looks a lot like this. So what do you think A controls? The steepness of it. What's A on this one? 1. 
So it's just a regular parent graph, right? This just shifted. Where is it shifted? Let's change this to looking like this with the minus sign. Isn't this really x minus negative 2? So then what's my vertex? Negative 2, 2. Which means I would shift over 2, just like we did on the previous screen, right? I would shift over 2 and up 2. There's my vertex. If that's my vertex, right here, and here. What's my axis of symmetry? If that's my vertex, negative 2. Not just negative 2, though. Let me change the color anyway. Not just negative 2. Negative 2 is half of a point. It's x equals negative 2. x equals negative 2 is a vertical line, right? All right, so now I've plotted my vertex. I've drawn my axis of symmetry. Now I just have to use symmetry to complete the graph. If I'm going to use symmetry, where could I start with that? By what I've got here, what do I already know? My y-intercept. My y-intercept is right there. It's 6. And if my y-intercept is 6, I could always find, let's add this in here. I've got, here's my graph. How many points do I need to complete this graph? Three. So I've got negative two, two already. I've got the vertex. I already know my um, y-intercept is zero, six. I only need one more. Negative four, six, but I've got to check it. So the function of negative four equals, using my original equation, I have negative 4 squared plus 4 times negative 4 plus 6 gives me 16 minus 16 plus 6 gives me 6. That works. So if I substitute in a negative 4, I get 6. There's my graph. Yes, this is the vertex, this is vertex form right here, right? So this tells me, just like this one here, this right here told me that I needed to, this equation tells me I have to shift up 6, right? This equation tells me I have to do what? Shift to the right, correct? This one tells me I have to shift to the right. This one tells me so if it's in parentheses, that tells me I must shift to the right or to the left. When it's outside of the parentheses, it tells me whether I need to shift up or down or translate. This one tells me both. This tells me that I need to move to the left 3, because this is really negative, negative 3. So it tells me I have to move to the left 3 and down 2, right? That's why we went left 3 and down 2. Make sense? That's what we did here. We put this equation in that form. See that? So that tells me I'm going to shift to the left 2 and up 2. Left 2, up 2. Gives me my vertex of negative 2, 2. So in this equation up here, h and k, if I were to write this, That's just the equation of a vertex. This is vertex form. I'm trying to make this right here. <coughs> Sorry, give me a second. I'm trying to make this look like this. And the way I made this look like this was I completed the square to put it in this form right here. See that? So now that it's in that form, I can say I got to shift left and shift up. And let me just finish with this right here. So if, let me use the red again. If this <laughs> is negative 2, comma 2, where h 
is negative 2 and k is positive 2, just like in that one. h is my x-coordinate, k is my y-coordinate. It's the same thing with the center of a circle, right? Don't you use h and k for a center of a circle? Doesn't the center of a circle shift and shift? Remember that from geometry? No? Okay. Hopefully, with my class and the way I try and be conceptual, when you get to math analysis and the teacher says, remember behavior graphs, you're going to be like, yes, I remember behavior graphs. Mrs. Miller talked about them all the time. No? Not going to happen? Yes. Isn't negative, negative 2 a positive? That's what I did. See how this is a negative? The natural form has a negative in it. So if you see this, it's just like when we're solving. It's just like when we're solving for something. Don't we get that the answer is negative 2? Right? It's exactly the same thing, right? So if I see something like this, x minus x plus 4, what I'm really seeing is x minus minus 4. If, okay, let's put it this way. If I were to say the answer is this. This is my answer. How would I get that answer? How would I get that answer? Subtract 2. So isn't my answer really negative 2? See what I mean? Does that make a little bit more sense? So whenever you see something like that, so if I were to say this, what's my answer? Add 2 to both sides. Make sense? Yeah? Better? This one. Axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. Wherever the vertex is, that's my symmetry. Right there. That's right at the base of it. Okay, let's try another one. You guys ready? This is the easier one. i got to go to the more complicated one, and the more complicated one is the one you're going to take in your notes. Okay? This is just like the basics of it. You guys ready? All right, so write in each equation in vertex form, identify the vertex axis symmetry and graph it. So the first thing I'm going to say to myself is I'm going to need an xy table. I'm going to need my vertex, and I'm going to abbreviate here. I'm going to need my axis of symmetry. I don't really need my y-intercept y. Well, it's right there, but it's way off the graph, right? So I need three points in here to graph it, so I'm going to have to find two points this time. My vertex, and then find two more. Because that one's way too far off to get an accurate graph. Correct? Okay, so let's begin. First we need to group and factor. So I'm going to group my x's together. So I have, let me just get move this a little bit so I've got lots of room to work. So I have y equals, of course, 2x squared plus 12x plus 17. Correct? Yeah. What am I going to do next with this? I'm not going to take out a 2x. I'm going to take out a 2 so that I can complete the square. Correct? That's what it looks like when I complete the square, right? All right. I hope that my computer hears my voice because I think I need to come over here now. So when I add a space here, I also have to subtract a space here. But check this out. What is the value that makes this first square? Six gets cut in half, right? So that's 3, and 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to have to add a 9 here, right? 
Does that mean I should put back in on here? So look it. There's a present you got here. This isn't really nine. This is eighteen. So I better make sure I subtract twice nine. You know what I mean? Just for, I've already got it here. See how I've got a 2 parenthesis 9? So I'm going to have a 2 parenthesis 9 there as well. See how I did that? I've got to account for all of it. I'm not just adding 9, I'm adding 2 times 9. So I better subtract 2 times 9. And that's as complicated as it gets. Okay? That's the only difference between the one we just did and the one we're doing now. So, let's continue. So now I have y equals, let's factor this. It's x plus what? 3 squared. This is eight, negative 18. Negative 18 plus 17 is negative 1. Now I've got vertex form right there. So how am I going to shift my graph? My graph is going to shift what? To the right or to the left? To the left, 3 and down 1. To the left, 3 and down 1. What's that 2 going to do to it? Make it skinny, right? Make it skinnier. So, I'm going to say my vertex is negative 3, negative 1, and my axis of symmetry is negative 3, or x equals negative 3. I've got negative 3, negative 1. What two more points do I want to put in here? I can't use that. I would use negative 1 or negative 2. Negative 1 is probably easier to use. So let's put a negative 1 and see what happens. Change my, I'll leave my color in red. So the function of negative 1, I'm going to use my original equation up here. 2 times negative 1 squared plus 12 times negative 1 plus 17, which is 2 minus 12 plus 17, which is how much? 7? Am I right? Yeah. So negative 1, 7. So I'm guessing, if I'm correct, if I go to negative 5, I'm also going to get 7. Let's try negative 5 f of negative 5 is 2 times negative 5 squared plus 12 times negative 5 plus 17 gives me negative, sorry, positive 50. 50 minus 60 plus 17 is 7. That's all I needed. There's my graph. Question. Because it's up here. 17 is way up here. If it's off the graph, technically, I can't use it to find symmetry. Because you can't really see the symmetry if it's not even on the graph, right? Good question. Anybody else? Then you can use it. Well, then you can make up your own, absolutely. But if it was, look at this example. See why I only needed, I had 0, 6 already because I knew that 6 was right there. So all I had to do was test that point and then I had all three points. So it was easier. That one was easier. All right. I'm going to go to the last one. It looks more complicated. It's very, 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 very straightforward. So write an equation for the parabola shown in the graph. Copy vertex form. Here's vertex form. It's our first step. Can you tell me what vertex form is again? Oh, I want to say one more thing about this. Sorry about that. See how that is telling us the behavior? You guys remember this old friend, right? What is B? The y-intercept. Isn't that the same as that? What's M? You know what that is? The slope of it, right? 
So it follows the same type of rules. When you're graphing something, you get you do the y-intercept and then the slope. This is the y, or that's not the y-intercept. This is the y-intercept. There's your slope. Interesting, right? It's not just a coincidence that it works that way. All right, so let's look at this. So what is my vertex form again? Y equals A times minus H squared plus K. Here's my H. Here's my K. Here's my X. Here's my Y. What's the only thing I don't have? My A. So what do you think I need to do to find A? Right? Yes. They will, if they give you something like this, they will give you a point where you know what X and Y is. It would work if it was here too. If I were to work this out right now, it would work if I used that point too. Where's another one that's exactly on the graph? Right there? That one would work, and that one would work. They'd all give me the same equation. Okay? All right, so let's begin. I, you can plug them all in at the same time. I'm not going to. I'm going to do them one step at a time. So I've got, I'm going to do the H and the K first. Y equals A times X minus, what's my H? 3 squared, and what's my K? Negative 2. Rewrite that. Y equals A times X minus 3 squared minus 2. Now what do I need to plug in? My X and Y. What's my Y? 3 equals A times, what's my X? 5 minus 3 squared minus 2. What's 5 minus 3? 2. What's 2 squared? So isn't this 3 equals 4A minus 2? Add 2 to both sides, what do I get? 5 equals 4A, then what do I do? Divide by 4 and I get A equals 5 fourths. Pretty easy, right? So my equation really is, so I substitute, I solve, and I'm going to rewrite my equation. Y equals 5 fourths times X minus, what's my H? 3 squared minus 2 is my equation. That is this one. Shifting to the right 3, right? 1, 2, 3, and down 2, down 2, and a little bit steeper than a regular graph. Because 5 fourths is a little bit steeper than 1. Correct? Alright, let's pass this out. Have you guys copy this one down completely. Okay, so write an equation in vertex form. Identify the vertex axis of symmetry in graph. Let's move, move this around a little bit. Make this smaller because I'm going to need a little bit of room. Okay. So in order to begin this one, I need to group this and this. When I group that, I'm also going to pull out a negative 2, correct? So when I pull out a negative 2, I'm left with x squared minus 8x minus 31. Now in order to complete the square, I need to add my c and then subtract it. But I'm going to subtract it times what? Negative 2. This is too big. There we go. Negative 2 times C. Yes. That was the hardest part of that one. So what's this? 16 and 16. Negative 2 times x minus 4 squared. I'll finish this up and have it posted for you guys.